This animation will review the electrophysiology of atrial myocytes with a focus on the ion channels that are the primary targets of drugs used to treat arrhythmias. Ions move across cell membranes through specific ion channels by way of exchangers and by transporters that pump ions against electrical and concentration gradients. The action potentials recorded in atrial myocytes reflect the sum of all ion movements through these various ion channels, transporters, and exchangers. The depolarizing impulse generated by the sinus node, the pacemaker of the heart, propagates first to the adjacent atrial myocyte cells, resulting in the P wave on the electrocardiogram. Atrial myocytes express relatively high amounts of voltage-gated sodium channels in addition to L-type calcium channels and various potassium channels. Sodium channels have a very low threshold voltage, so are the first voltage-gated ion channels to open as the myocyte membrane depolarizes. In the active or open state, sodium channels conduct large quantities of sodium into the cell. This large, rapid surge of sodium into the cell causes a rapid depolarization, known as phase zero of the action potential, that lasts only about a millisecond, after which the sodium channel rapidly changes from the active or open state to the inactive, which is a closed state. The rapid depolarization of membrane potential generated by the inward sodium current causes the sequential openings of other ion channels, including L-type calcium channels and various potassium channels. A brief repolarization phase, known as phase one, following the rapid depolarization phase is due to opening of potassium channels. The plateau phase, known as phase two of the action potential, is primarily due to inward depolarizing currents through L-type calcium channels. The entry of calcium through L-type calcium channels induces the ryanidine receptor to open and release calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, a process known as calcium-induced calcium release. The resulting increase in intracellular calcium is responsible for triggering the calcium-dependent contractile protein interactions that result in atrial myocyte contraction. Towards the end of the plateau phase of the action potential, repolarizing delayed rectifier currents move potassium ions out of the cell through potassium channels. These outward potassium currents increase with time as calcium channels inactivate. This gives rise to the repolarization phase of the action potential, known as phase three. Removal of intracellular calcium occurs by both an ATP-requiring calcium pump, known as CIRCA, the sarcoendoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase, that removes calcium back to storage sites in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and the sodium calcium exchanger that uses electrochemical gradients to extrude calcium in exchange for moving sodium ions into the cell. The drop in intracellular calcium results in relaxation of the cardiac myocyte. As the membrane potential returns to the resting voltage during the repolarization phase of the action potential, sodium channels recover from the inactive to the resting state. The recovery process is voltage dependent and can be altered by various antiarrhythmic drugs as described in the next section. Also contributing to the repolarizing current is an ATP requiring ion pump, the sodium potassium ATPase pump that pumps potassium ions into the cell and extrudes sodium ions, thus restoring sodium and potassium to their resting concentrations within the cell. Slowing the recovery of sodium channels to the resting state results in an increase in the refractoriness of atrial and ventricular myocytes, making these cells less likely to depolarize if stimulated prematurely.
Flecainide and propafenone are drugs used to treat atrial tachycardia, such as atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. These agents bind the sodium channel in a state-dependent manner and block sodium influx into cardiac myocytes. Both drugs bind the active or open state of the sodium channel, although propafenone also binds the inactive state of the sodium channel. Flecainide and propafenone are referred to as class 1C antiarrhythmic agents because they dissociate very slowly from the sodium channel. The time constant for recovery of channel function following exposure to these drugs is longer than 10 seconds. Because these drugs dissociate very slowly from the sodium channel, they have effects on both normal and rapidly depolarizing myocytes. These agents decrease the threshold for excitability such that greater membrane depolarization is required to cause sodium channels to open from the resting state. This results in reduced automaticity. Because they dissociate very slowly from the sodium channels, these drugs also prolong the effective refractory period. Both of these pharmacological effects are important antiarrhythmic mechanisms of action. By inhibiting sodium influx in the cardiac myocytes, they also slow conduction through the atria and ventricles. The slowed conduction results in a prolonged PR interval and widening of the QRS complex on the electrocardiogram. Amiodarone, dofetilide, and ibutilide are class three antiarrhythmic agents that prolong action potential duration, primarily through effects on blocking potassium efflux through the delayed rectifier potassium channel, known as IKR. Dofetilide is a pure potassium channel blocker, whereas amiodarone and ibutilide have additional pharmacological effects that contribute to their antiarrhythmic properties. Inhibition of potassium efflux through potassium channels slows repolarization and prolongs the action potential. Prolongation of action potential duration slows the voltage-dependent recovery of sodium channels to the resting state, which increases the effective refractory period of cardiac myocytes. The effect of prolonged action potential duration is manifest on the electrocardiogram by a prolongation of the QT interval due to the slowed repolarization of ventricular myocytes. The repolarization of atrial myocytes is not observable on the electrocardiogram.